Hi y'all, I'm Jeffrey Watson. Today, I have a very interesting feature. I haven't been here a couple of days, so I decided I'm going to fly through some novel reviews. Through a couple of them, or three of them. I hope y'all enjoy. So, I want to do my top three favorite Star Wars Cam novels of the year, of 2019, that I've read. I read more, but this is my top three favorite. So, in chronological order, is Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company. This book is a great book, right? I'll get to my review in a minute. Then the next book I read, this is my favorite, well, my, my, not my next book, but my next favorite, was Star Wars, Masters and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. This was a really great, really great book. And my final really, really good book I read 2019 from Star Wars is Star Wars, Resistance Reborn. Now this is the immediate prequel to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. So these three were my favorite canon books of 2019. I read more, some of them were not that good, some of them were really good, but this is my favorite. So, I'll start off with a review for Battlefront Twilight Company. This book, let me read the back. Among the stars and across the vast expanses of space, the galactic civil war rages. On the battlefields of multiple worlds in the mid-rim, legions of stormtroopers are waging brutal combat against an armada of freedom fighters. In the streets of Raven cities, the Rebel Alliance forces are pushing deeper into Imperial territory as they grapple with the savage re realities of war on the ground. Leading the charge are the soldiers of Twilight Company, the 61st Mobile Infantry, whose hard bitten Fear, furiously loyal members dog, doggedly survive where others perish. Against the deadliest odds, the Phoenix is their mo its most powerful weapon. But when the rebels are ordered to fall back in the face of, of superior op um, opposition, Twilight Company must relu reluctantly comply until an unlikely ally radically changes the strategic equation, giving the Alliance's hardest fighting warriors a chance to make their boldest boldest maneuver and turn retreat into resurgence and this is by alexander freed this book clocks in at about let me see here 478 pages it's a pretty big novel it's pretty chunky but i flew through this novel and i finished this on the way to and back from pigeon forge i, I, I just i just flew through it it was amazing yes there's no lightsabers um, except one scene with Darth Vader, about half of the book, but that's very brief. This is about an a rebel alliance soldier and the mirror and an imperial stormtrooper. And it's from it's you're down in the trenches with them. You're seeing the hard um, realities of battle as just a small soldier. And it ends up being one of my favorite books. It's it's incredible. You'll be sucked into it. Um, it follows Twilight Company. They are a comp a battle company in the rebel alliance and they're pushing um they're pushing inward into the mid rim and they're trying to take care of the mid rims so they can then conquer the core worlds this book takes place right after the clone wars from some prequel no uh, prequel chapters and then most of the story takes place right before empire strikes back during the battle of hoth in empire strikes back really cool and just after empire strikes back so yeah, you see the Battle of Solus. You see them pushing to um, Kuat Drive Yards, which they don't really get to. I wish we had seen Kuat Drive Yards because that would have been a great campaign. What I wish they had done is kept on making these books into like a trilogy until the end of the um, end of the civil um, end of the Galactic Civil War. But they did not do that. They decided to make Battlefront uh, Star Wars Battlefront um, Inferno Squadron, which I haven't read yet. I hope it's good. I'm going to read that soon. But yeah. Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company. Read it. It's really good. My next book. I, um, I read this in late May. I read this in... No. I read this in early May. I read this in late May, early June. This is by Claudia Gray. On the back it says, It matters, Queen John said quietly. It matters which side we choose. Even if there will never be more light than darkness. Even if there can be no more joy in the galaxy then there's pain for every action we undertake for every word we speak for every life we touch it matters i don't turn toward the light because it means someday i'll win some sort of cosmic game i turn toward it because it is the light that's a little 
paragraph on the back, and then um, here it says, A Jedi must be a fearless warrior, a guardian of justice, and a scholar in the ways of the forest. But perhaps the Jedi's most essential duty is to pass on what they have learned. Master Yoda trained Dooku. Dooku trained Quinjon Jinn, and now Quinjon has a Padawan of his own. But while Quinjon has faced all manner of threats, and danger as a Jedi. Nothing has ever scared him like the thought of failing his apprentice. Obi-Wan Kenobi has deep respect for his master, but struggles to understand him. Why, why must Clem John so often disregard the laws that bind the Jedi? Why is Clem John drawn to ancient Jedi pro prophecies instead of more practical concerns? And why was Obi-Wan told that Clem John is considering an, in, um, an invitation to join the Jedi Council? Knowing it would mean the end of their partnership. The simple answer is scares him. Obi-Wan has filled his master. When Jedi Real Avaros, another former student of Dooku, requests their assistance with a with a political dispute, Jin and Kenobi travel to the royal court of Pigeon for what may be their final mission together. What should be a simple assignment quickly becomes clouded by deceit and by visions of violent disaster that take hold in Quinn John's mind. As Quinn John's faithful as Quinn John's faith in prophecy grows, Obi-Wan's faith in him is tested. Just as a threat sur surfaces that will demand that master and apprentice come together as never before or be divided forever. So, this book came out in about mid-May. I picked it up, like, yeah, early May. Picked it up, read it. Um, this book is a little bit shorter. Um, it talks about 330 pages, but it's, this is hardback, uh, they're shorter. And the, the plot of this book is basically about Quinn, John, and Kenobi. And they are, Quinn, I think Obi-Wan is about 17, and they've been master and apprentice for about seven years, and they're struggling. They don't see eye to eye. Quinn, John's very, he don't go by the council a lot of times. The council doesn't like that. And Obi-Wan really wants to follow the rules, so they don't get along. But the council realizes that they need Quinn John, so they ask, they invite him to be on the council. And part of that reason they want him to be on the council is because they like Obi-Wan and they want him to have another master. So they send on their final mission, on their final mission, and Obi-Wan sees no reason why Quinn John wouldn't take the job. So, or take the um, council seat. So they go on their final mission, and they end up figuring out that they need each other, and they really like each other and they grow you see their relationship really flourish over this book it's it's really interesting to see we get to go to the jedi temple on coruscant as i said many times coruscant 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 i want more and then um excuse me and then we just go we figure out this new world we see this agent corporation mining corporation really interesting um, Claudia Gray really makes her stance as one of the as the queen of Star Wars um, canon novels. The king is obviously Timothy Zahn, um, but the, she's the queen of Star Wars canon. She's written um, Bloodline, is that's a Leia novel. She's written Leia, Princess of Alderaan, and she's also written Lost Stars, which is another great novel. I'm gonna get a review to you soon about that. But if you wanna, and also sorry. Dooku Jalos came out in November. Haven't picked that up yet. I'm going to read that. But before this, this is the earliest new canon book we see. This is the only, this is the earliest piece of new canon movie, TV show ever we have seen. So it's really interesting. Pick it up. Okay, for my final book of the, for my final best canon book of the year. Star Wars Resistance Reborn by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is before the saga ends, before the rise of Skywalker, the re the resistance must be reborn. This is my favorite book of the year, most hands down, definitely. It looks it looks really cool on the cover, not the best cover, but it's made by Del Rey. It's a it's an adult novel, as all these are. They're meant for adults, so they're not childish at all. They're really in depth into canon, really good. It says Journey to Rise of Skywalker. Um, this book clocks in at around. This is it's a really shorter novel, considerably shorter. Um, 295 pages. But don't let that fool you. Um, it's packed and packed all the way. It has a lot of great moments in it. Um, let me read the inside. The heroes of the Resistance must fight back from the edge of, of, edge of 
Oblivion in this pivotal prequel to Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. The Resistance is in ruins. In the wake of their herring escape from Crate, what was once an army has, has been reduced to a handful of wounded heroes. Finn, Poe, Ray, Rose, Chewbacca, Leia Organa, their names are famous among the oppressed worlds they fight to liberate. But names can only get you so far, and Leia's last desperate call for aid has gone unanswered. From the jungles of Ryloth to the shipyards of Corellia, the shadow of the First Order looms large, and those with the bravery to face the darkness are scattered and isolated. If hope is to survive, the Resistance must journey throughout the galaxy, seeking out more leaders, including those who, in days gone by, held a nascent rebellion topple an empire. Battles will be fought, alliances will be forged, and the Resistance will be reborn. So, by reading that, I almost flapped. So, it started, had a field trip on this Friday. It was, it was actually the last Friday in November, and it was a cold day. I came home after that field trip, got home a little bit later. Um, it was a great day. I've been anticipating this book. It came out that Friday. I didn't think I was going to get it to like a couple weeks, a couple, like a week or two, because I really, I really wanted to read to it before Rise of Skywalker. I had to, if you really want to know what's going on in Rise of Skywalker. So, I went to Walmart, and I said, let me just go by there and see if they have it. I didn't expect them to have it. I walked by there, saw this, and I almost fainted. They had it in stock. That Friday it came out at Walmart. So I picked it up, went home, and read it, and read it, and read it, and I read it in one day. And it was amazing. Um, you know, sometimes I need kind of books and feel isolated. They don't really have a lot of um, connections that the legends have. But this book right here, Rebecca Runhorse was not greedy in this book. She got all these characters from so many other works and put them in this book. From the rebellion, from the movies, and we get to see uh, Pen, uh, Finn, Poe, and Ray, and Leia, and Chewbacca, the main cast of characters. We get to see, and we get to see what happens. This happens right after the Last Jedi, about and there's a year between Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. So we get to see what really what's happening between Rise between the Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. Extremely interesting. We get to see. Sometimes I think in the movies. We don't see how wide the Force Order is in the galaxy. This book, we get to see that they're basically in charge of the galaxy. People are really afraid of them. Um, the Republic is gone, so they just kind of swept in, taking over the galaxy. Um, so yeah, it's a great book. We get to, and Rebecca Roanhorse. The these two authors, really great authors, but they've written Star Wars books before. Rebecca Roanhorse has not written a Star Wars book before. And for her to write her first one and to be my favorite Star Wars book ever, she's she has to write more. She has to because she is the best. So pick this one up. I most definitely highly recommend this. You have to. You have to. All these three books you have to pick up. Um, these are my top three favorite canon books in 2019. Um, sometime I don't have to be my three worst Favorite canon novels in 2019. Um, one of those, I'll give a little spoiler us here. One of those is Tarkin by James Lucino. Um, I love James Lucino. He's awesome. Um, one of my favorite books by him is Plagueis. Ross Plagueis. Um, that is all. That's probably the best Legends books I've ever Legends book I've ever read. But it just this book bored me. That book bored me. I didn't really like it. So that'll come soon. Um, if you do, if you haven't picked up any Star Wars novels yet, highly recommend them. If you love the franchise, you'll better understand the timeline and fill everything out for you. So, thank you. Um, I'm reading the Thrawn trilogy right now. I got, I think, six more books. I got a lot of gift cards for Christmas. I bought six more books. I am just going through those as fast as I can right now. I'm loving them. I'm reading the Thrawn trilogy. I got Alphabet Squadron and Queen's Peril. So, um... Yeah, and I also got the Star Wars right, or Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary by, um, I think it's DK. Yeah, uh, that's a great book. So, I'm reading those right now. Get those reviews out soon. Thank y'all so much. I'm sorry I haven't been making as much videos this week. It has been a crazy week. I finally had some time. We got out of school a little bit earlier today. So, I finally had some time to make a video. 
Thank you for indulging me, and I hope y'all have a wonderful day.